there is a law in the spirit that governs the overall efficiency of believers i want you to please listen when you find a believer excelling in his spirit adventure there is a law that governs the centrality of a believer's excellence and most people have not learned that principle and so they chase excellence across different areas of their lives while violating that law and they find out that after investing time energy to build whether it's relationships whether it's finances whether it's a career eventually everything falls back like a pack of cards because they keep violating a law that many of them do not understand i'm praying that god will open your eyes now to see in the name of jesus christ psalm 23 please from verse 1 and 2 the first thing that god wants to restore tonight is your soul the lord is my shepherd he says i shall not want let's read verse 2 together uh-huh uh-huh he restored my soul verse 3 he restored my soul this is the first thing that he restores he restored my soul many believers do not know that there is a law in the spirit that your life will be an overall reflection of the quality of your spiritual life the quality of your soulical health the bible says it in third john john has only one chapter the third third john one now and verse two it says beloved i wish above all things are we still together that ye prosper and be in health third john i wish above all things above what i wish above your prospering financially i wish above your getting a job i wish above your getting children i wish above your excelling in business i wish above your getting a visa are we together now i wish above your having you know being a, a house owner those things are wonderful so the first thing here is that the wish this wish is not the only one he has he had many wishes and many desires for the people the spirit of god speaking to his servant i wish many things for you but there is one that surpasses every other desire he says that ye may prosper say i will prosper one more time say i will prosper he says i wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health but he now benchmarks everything based on a reference. He says, even as thy soul prospereth. That means before God marks you to be successful in the spirit, it doesn't matter what you achieve and it doesn't matter what you have. The realm of the spirit will have to vet the state of your soul the health of your spiritual life are we together in order to verify if your success is true and lasting that means when you find an individual excelling in any area of his life if it is at the expense of his soul then it is not true success in the spirit are we together now are we learning this is very powerful the business of the soul let me tell you this is the greatest pursuit and the greatest need of every man most people will not know that what they really need is the health of their soul if i told you now that the greatest problem you have is a spiritual problem a problem of your spiritual life and the health of your soul you will most likely say no i'm like what i need is money what i need is a house what i need is something tangible that i can interact with but that there is a law in the spirit i hope you know that i'm talking about those who are in the kingdom if you are outside of the kingdom your soul in fact your soul is the collateral that you have to give in exchange for any other thing you get you are going to be learning that the commodity a time comes in the spirit where everything you have to purchase to your life will either be as given by God or as traded with your soul because your soul is currency in the spirit you can give it up for other lesser things 
we are going to be considering a few scriptures and one of it is the one that says what shall it profit a man he's speaking profit it's a business language what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and you use your soul as the money that bought that you can literally go to the market of life and destiny and exchange your soul for money exchange your soul for fame you don't have to be demonic and you don't have to be occultic many people are doing it the idea of selling your soul most times when we hear it, we think it is something that you have to be occultic to say okay take my life and give me money no many people are already doing it one of the ways you know true success is to find out what happens to your spiritual state as you rise if you find out you can know who is behind your success by looking at the consequence of that rising on your spiritual life the moment you find out that for every increase every open door every advancement your spiritual life is suffering you are transacting with babylon this demonic satanic system you may not know satan took jesus up the mountain and he said bow to me that is how you sell your soul you don't sell your soul by giving it you sell your soul by bowing to something is someone learning now whatever you bow to a transaction happen in the spirit satan came and met jesus and said look all of the glories of this world i have it but i don't need it what i need is your loyalty your allegiance you came as god incarnate bow to me and i can give you everything he was willing to relinquish part of what jesus was coming to die to receive why follow the route of the cross when you can just trade your soul and you have it and there are many people today who do not understand this system in the spirit what shall it profit a man what shall it profit a man of god what shall it profit a worshiper what shall it profit a businessman what shall it profit a student a career person if you gain that kind of business bar you will not even know what you are losing because you'll be focused on what you are gaining but he's saying while you are gaining you are losing something else but your attention is in what you are gaining you can gain fame you can gain increase you can even gain speed and mistaking that gain for true profit only that when you check your soul you will find out that it died because you grew it died because increase came it died because a door opened at that point you know that satan scammed you he came and sold you something distracted you and you thought you were gaining whereas you were dying hallelujah this is a law that i have found out in my life because you see like um reverend shared before i came up every human being wants to make progress i think i've said it here in this church that psychologists teach that one of the keys for measuring happiness is progress or a sense of it to the degree to which you perceive you are making progress that is the degree to which you will be happy if you believe or perceive that there's some level of stuntedness in your life or in ministry if you are responsible it should be a source of concern am i right on that yes and there's no woman who gives birth to a baby and expects that baby to start running walking talking in one day but after a year maybe one year and a half two years if the baby cannot talk the baby cannot walk the baby cannot do whatever immediately it becomes a medical condition are we together because instinctively she knows that that baby has now assumed a state where he or she should begin to at least motion the things that make for growth so when people become stagnated and stunted whether as a man of god as a businessman as a career person generally it becomes a source of concern now let me tell you this satan does not attack you every day know this there are days that even if you call satan to attack you he will say i'm not on duty he's not a fool satan knows that there is something about the desperation of men the desperation of men is his marketing strategy for this exchange listen carefully for as long as you are a young person having someone to sponsor you taking care of you it may be difficult to succumb to certain temptations because there are harvests over seeds you did not sow so when satan comes it's easy to drive away that temptation but the day you are now on your own and there's house rent hello 
and the price of fuel is whatever it is now in the midst of that desperation satan comes the bible calls him a thief and only a foolish thief steals all the time thieves don't steal all the time there is timing and intelligence and preparation are we together they steal when you are not around or while you are asleep he said while men slept now many of you i'm saying this because this transaction that has destroyed you now started at the point of your pain and your desperation every time believers are in want every time believers are crying for more be careful it's not only god's attention you are calling you are also calling the attention of the realm of the spirit because they know that desperation makes men vulnerable you are desperate for marriage you are desperate for a child you are desperate for a job you are desperate for anointing you are desperate for increase if someone comes to meet a young boy and says come i want to take you somewhere and conjure some demonic things and give you power that temptation will not work because the boy is not desperate it is dangerous to try to give people things when they are not hungry enough so there is a hunger level that satan waits for until he perceives that hunger he will not come to attack you are we together now yeah the day he sees that the financial issue is becoming a family problem that's when he comes with his options because chances are excellent that you will now listen to it what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world have you seen someone try to look for water when he's thirsty i mean if you bring me a drum of water now i'm not that thirsty at best i will just take one bottle and that's fine are we together but when i am really thirsty like unto death if you bring water sometimes you can tell me this bottle is hundred thousand because of my desperation i become vulnerable to you I don't want to die and even though I know you are cheating me it's not hundred thousand but I prefer my pain solved this is how Satan trapped many people he knows that there's something that befalls all men is called exhaustion please listen listen I want to show you a transaction that has been happening to your spirit man that you are not even aware of because some of us you have to kill that business with the spirit now destroy that business with satan now else you will find out that everything you are trying to build now will eventually fall because you have violated a law i wish above all things that ye prosper and to be in health even as thy soul prospereth there are men of god for instance who want power justifiably so want increase want open doors many of you have come to receive impartations and you will receive many of you have come to receive healings you have come to receive um you know breakthroughs and all kinds of things and i i tell you in the name of jesus christ every desire you came here with god will honor you and even surpass your expectation are we together but there is a spiritual law that we must trust god for grace to open our eyes to see that the health of your spirit the health of your soul is the power point that controls everything around your life and destiny and it does not matter how healthy you think you are financially healthy if it is at the expense of your spiritual life you are holding shadows eventually you will lose it you have influence you have positions you have titles you have whatever kind of accomplishment listen in my little work i have seen people who you would maybe purport that you wanted your life to be like them their life looked complete it looked excellent it looked filled with all kinds of things but there was one thing that was missing while they were in pursuit of this thing satan came cashed in on their desperation and he received their soul their allegiance their worship their time and ask them to do every other thing i can tell you if you can surrender your soul to satan he will not attack any part of your life again he doesn't need any other thing from you again the reason why he touches your finances is not because of finance he's touching something else through your finance the reason why he touches your health is not because of your health satan does not need money he does not need increase he does not need a child why should he lock the womb of a woman what does it do to him does he need the children no what satan wants is to allow time or pain push you to that point of desperation when you become desperate he comes as a negotiator give me your soul 
and I can give you any other thing. And you may not, he won't come and say, give me directly. Let me tell you how he comes. By your exhaustion in prayer. I'm tired of this prayer. I can't go and pray again. Something is happening. A bargain is happening in the spirit without you knowing. Are we together? You wake up in the morning and to open the scripture, honestly, look, I'm overwhelmed by my problem. Something is happening. It is gradual. Then a call comes from someone and he says, look, oh, it's just that I don't want to tell you, but there's somebody. Aha. Uh -huh. Two years ago, you'd have said, God forbid, don't talk to me about anything. But two years later, in the face of desperation, you say, ah, boy, it's true, oh. I'm 49 years old now. I don't have my own child. He said, there's somebody. It's not like he's bad, exactly. He doesn't really do anything bad, but it's just that me too, I don't understand him, but he's not, I, I'm not sure I've seen anything that is directly evil. And the Spirit of God is telling you, but you see, your, your desperation has caused Satan to so close the door of your sensitivity. You cannot even know that this is, you are entering into a fuller snare, and then you do not know. At that point, compromise starts gradually until you find yourself in the heart of the things that have violated your convictions. You have sold your soul. Your prayer life dies. Your word life dies. And then in exchange, you will see that a semblance of increase comes. Satan is not stupid. If he makes everything fail in your life, it will lead to conviction, repentance, brokenness, and a retreat. So he will not crumble every aspect of your life like that. He will allow you to be enjoying breakthrough. All of a sudden, a job came. You even danced around it, not knowing that that job was an arrow. Did you hear what I said? When the Bible talks about arrows that fly, he's not talking about a, a sharp object though. There are many things we call breakthroughs that are arrows. It was targeted at your spiritual life. The job came, but from the day the job came, you can't remember praying again. From the day the job came, the moment the Holy Spirit wants your time, they say, look, we demand this and that. Are you ready for increase or not? And you remember, more money. God, I will attend to you later on. There are many people who have violated this law of preserving the health of their soul and this includes preachers there are times that when the devil wants to destroy a man of god he does not bring luck he brings abundance and ministerial open doors not orchestrated by god doors will open in a very strange way doors will open that don't depend on your prayer life doors will open that don't depend on your fasting Doors will open that don't depend on your engaging the word. Whether you obey God's word or not, those doors are opening. It's an attack. When you find out that certain results are coming without your engaging the word of God consistently, it is an attack by Satan because he knows that it will keep you complacent and that's how he destroys you. Are we together? Whether I pray or not, seems like the favor is coming. Whether I pray or not, why do I need to pray? It looks like I can share the word every time. And at that point, you will not see the value of prayer again. You will not see the value of fasting again. Who is learning tonight? You will not see the value of walking with God because after all, you are surrounded by such abundance. Just when the Holy Spirit begins to prick your heart to say, can't we get back to the secret place? And a lot of 10 million just enters your account. And you say, but I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I always found out why a rich man will be called a fool because foolishness and wealth don't go together but there was such a man in the Bible called a rich fool do you know what was foolish now I know he did business with somebody to get that wealth and that business ate up his soul he said my soul find rest not knowing that he had everything in that room minus his soul Jesus called him a fool because when he checked his entire life, he found money, but his soul had gone. His allegiance and his worship, he transferred it from worship to God Almighty, worship to things. This is a very simple principle you have to learn tonight, ladies and gentlemen. At the back of many people's tragedy, you know this thing they call rise and fall? It's not totally demonic. It is the natural consequence of violating this law 
and pursuing a lot of things. So you hold on to what looks like result, but because your soul is dead, it is not powered by your passion for God. It is not powered by your zeal for God. You become a celebrity and one day you will find out that you are like a fan with no power. It's just rotating itself to a stop. And it will stop just when the audience is ready to clap for you. And you'll find out that your life has gone back to square one. Hallelujah. I wish above all things. These are lessons that God taught me in my life. When you want to grow by God, let me tell you how he starts. It doesn't matter whether God is calling you to be a kingdom financier, a prophetess, an apostle, a businessman. Once you come to the school of the spirit, everybody starts with the same course. It is as you grow that you are now diverged to your various departments in the spirit. The person who is going to become a prayer warrior, the person who is going to become a kingdom billionaire, are we learning? The person who will be a healing evangelist, the person who is going to be a professor doing great things for God, the person who is going to be a captain of industry, once you come to the school of the spirit, all of you start from the same training. It is as you grow, the Holy Spirit begins to diverge you to various trainings as far as his call and election and ordination for you is concerned. But let me tell you how Satan deceives people. The moment you want to do business with Satan, he focuses on your desperation and your lust, not your passion. He wants to distract your passion for God. So the first thing he does is to examine your vulnerabilities. Weapons are fashion. What does this person like? At this point, this lady is desperate for marriage. At this point, this lady is desperate for a child. At this point, this lady is desperate for increase. At this point, this young man is desperate for the prophetic. Since he had a dream that he was a prophet, all he wants is that mantle. Satan's attack will be fashioned around your desires. Satan will never waste his time creating a desire around something that does not connect to you or an attack that does not connect to your lust are we learning now if i am not hungry if you want to tempt me with food you are wasting my time and wasting your own time too are we together imagine that you bring baby food what children eat maybe milk and something and you say apostle i want to tempt you with this I will look at you in pity i know something is wrong with you because that temptation cannot work because temptation requires something from you to connect to it are we learning now many of us right now you came for this conference and the truth is that although you have the call of god upon your life you are beginning to transact with this system this godless system and transact with the devil even without knowing how do i know that because you are having a semblance of increase but when we look at your life from a spirit standpoint your spirit man is dying from the day doors began to open as a man of god you cannot remember having a personal retreat for god again but your name is spreading far i tell you it is not breakthrough it is an attack that thing you call open door is an arrow it is designed to destroy your life because a time do you know even the early church faced this temptation the bible says when increase was coming quarrel it was satan that planted that seed among the people certain women began to quarrel acts chapter 6 look they are they are victimizing us the devil wanted to penetrate the apostolic community he said how do i come now these guys are zealous serving the lord how do we deal with this and he said you know what let's use welfare let's begin to plant bitterness let's begin to plant anger let's begin to plant jealousy is someone learning now and he planted that seed and the quarrel began to grow and when the apostles came the goal was not to feed the people evenly the goal was to take the apostolic community away from the things that keep their spirit robust the goal of that attack was not to bring order necessarily satan is not interested in who eats or who does not eat but the apostles detected it and said aha we now see that something the consequences of increase now wants to tell on our spiritual life he said appoint others in this business but as for us we have found what keeps us relevant we have found what keeps us in fire he says we will give ourselves continually Acts 6 and verse 4 to prayer and to the ministry of the word satan lost that temptation 
Let me tell you what would have happened to many of us. You get to a point where you say, no, 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 no. I've labored too much. I can't build this ministry and watch it crumble. You know what? Let me take a retreat from my time of prayer and the rest. Let's deal with administrative issues. When Satan finds you in that state, he starts multiplying the problem in your church. And before you know it, you have become a businessman, an administrator, every other thing at the expense of your prayer, at the expense of the word, at the expense of your growth. Because you are still in church does not mean you are with God. You will not know that you have left the place of your consecration, the place of power, and the place of grace. Most people do not know why they lose things eventually. I am telling you that the attacks that come to you, usually, they happen as an end point. After Satan has distracted you away, it doesn't matter what you are celebrating. It's shadows. It will take time and drop. That's why you find out a man can be in ministry for a very long time, supposedly doing well, but at the expense of his spiritual life. Satan does not mind your 15 years success. It does not intimidate him because in one year, after he has laid hold on that which keeps you relevant, you can crumble in one year. That what you built in 15 years can crumble in one year. Hallelujah. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world? When I started my work with God, I had needs. I had financial needs. I had a lot of other needs. But the way God trained us, was he took our eyes away from everything including ministry including ministry the focus was on him the focus was not on power the focus was not on anointing the focus was not on healing the focus was not on greatness the focus was not on fame look at me the focus was not on becoming a great man mm -mm. The focus was not on breakthrough and revelation. When God calls you, let me tell you what he does. He takes your mind away from every other thing until your gaze, your eyes is fixed on him. That's when your progress begins in the spirit. When he was going to call Moses, look at me. How did he start the journey with Moses? The first thing he did was he simulated a burning bush. He never spoke to Moses about Egypt and all of these things until he got his attention. Only God knows how long it took Moses. Moses said, I will turn aside. Something else had my gaze, but I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when he saw, he said, that's it. Remove your shoes. Where you stand is holy ground. And he began this thing until Moses became a sign and a wonder. I know that many of us came to receive restoration and breakthrough, but let me tell you this. The first restoration you need tonight is not financial restoration. In as much as that is important the first restoration you need tonight is not health the first restoration you need tonight is not relationships we are going deep down to show you what went wrong it's like diagnosing a vehicle that has refused to own it used to be a beautiful vehicle carrying many people and for a reason you cannot understand it just stopped the tires still look fine the paint still looks fine the steering still looks fine the stereo is still bringing music but the car is not moving I will tell you what is wrong even as thy soul prospers Satan has taken advantage of your vulnerability and your desperation and taken away passion do you know the average young person in church the moment you bring teachings on presence power surrender immediately they shut down it's an attack they do not even know that it's, a, it's an attack once you bring a problem if, most people will prefer impartation a thousand times to the teachings that build them to become powerful is the reason why people fall down under the influence of oil and hands and rise up and you cannot tell what changed because for someone while he's seen a man of God he's thinking if I receive this anointing now all these guys that think I'm nothing, they will see what will happen. And that, that kind of thinking is already revealing something to you, that something is wrong. God cannot endorse that kind of thing. Are we together? I look at my life today by the mercies of God, and sometimes when I'm alone, tears just run down my eyes. And I say, my God, I thank God for this one training to focus on the health of your soul. 
for some of you you began this work with God 10 years ago if you had followed this pattern you would have been mighty by now but you became distracted in the training because you thought the training was for men of God and since you are not a man of God you said my own is I'm a businessman all this thing about prayer the word church mm -hmm, my own is God told me I will handle money at the end of it you who is the kingdom financier you still not had the money and the one you left at the altar praying now has the resources and is still looking at you and say you are still here because in this kingdom everything multiplies as the health of your soul your spirit man tells if it is God that increases you even if God is calling you to be a kingdom financier that training bar will have nothing to do with money until you die to self and get to a point where he can trust you with everything are we together many believers in church really do not understand the ways of the spirit and so most times with all due respect we think that the way God lived is that you just come with hunger full of our lusts and our desires and we just say God I am your son you died for me here is the scripture because I can paint a scripture on you to blackmail you oh yeah give me the breakthrough I need a wife I need a husband I need children and your word says the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to you I place a demand unfortunately it does not happen that way everything in this kingdom revolves around the will of God the moment your desire your template your outlook in life becomes in defiance to the will of God it doesn't matter how accurate your scripture recitation is you will never secure the help of God hallelujah I have seen people pray I have seen people fast but I have examined the content of their prayer and fasting and word study and it tells why they don't get answers from it because they are using spirituality to feed lust and God says no even if it is scripture you are quoting I have to examine your heart is it going to be at the expense of the health of your soul listen you have heard me say this my dear people and let me repeat it here in your presence there is nothing in my life today by the mercies of God that I cannot give God nothing nothing when I started with God and God started lifting me I prayed to him I said Lord this is a personal prayer from me to you may I never know the full extent of my impact I don't want to know it because it can be distracting if I have that knowledge Satan can come to me and say I hope you know you are a very great man do you know how great you are uh -huh. I hope you know that the temptation of great men is to fall down when Jesus met Satan met Jesus he said he took him to a holy mountain and said fall down angels will hold you I have seen the help of God in my life I have seen the mercy of God in my life let me tell you how I found it I didn't find it by looking for it I found it by looking away from, from all those things and staying with him staying with him staying with him making your spirit man so large and robust and before you know it you become a magnet in the spirit you will begin to draw the things that even listen 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 let's assume that this man of God is a businessman do you know most times if say for instance just in this example I tell him sir can I design a spiritual growth template for you the man will say no I'm not a man of God I'm a businessman bring things that deal with common sense give me five years with this man eventually I'm not a businessman but I can follow a template that even him as a businessman he will still be behind and he's saying you are not a businessman but what are you doing in the circle of wealthy people the health of your spirit man I'm showing you a key tonight that if you find some of you need to go back home and shelve a lot of useless activities they are not adding to your growth they will not add to your growth I assure you they will waste your time waste your energy waste everything about your life and at the end of it you find out that it looks like you've been making progress but the progress is on to futility but there is one thing you can find 
Mary found this. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and you are obsessed about many things, but one thing is needful. Someone say one thing. Shout it, say one thing. Ah, there is one thing that if you find in life, you would have found the key to wealth. You would have found the key to increase. There are things that when you find in life, my brothers and my sisters, the people you now admire today will look for you and call it an honor to stand before you. If I ask us to write our prayer request now, what area are you trusting God for restoration? Someone will say, Apostle, as I stand right now, I have lost 1 billion. I have lost 500 million. And you ask the person, what am I going to do about it? He now I'm looking for a loan. Or I'm looking for someone to help my business. But if I tell you, give me a chance to recommend a part for you out of that problem. He said, Apostle, you are not a businessman. Do your preaching. Chase us that give you money. And I ask the person, so how are you going to come out of this challenge? I have called Senator so, so, so and so and then he promised to connect me to one foundation abroad. I'm already calculating everything. I hope that give or take at least 200 million will come in and then when that 2 million comes, I'll do business and at least in two years. Oh dear, listen, let me tell you, the man talking to you is not stupid. Someone else can go before God and say, Father, if you do not open my eyes, I cannot see. If you do not help me, there is no human way I can come out of this. And the Lord says, you know what? Leave the issue of business. Leave the issue of profit. Focus on me. Satan desires to sift you. And you can throw business and everything and stay. And say, I have lost everything in my life. I will not lose my soul. Lord, let's start again. My brother, you can be in that place and one idea in his presence. One connection in his presence. The spirit of God. Is it not in your Bible that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? You can get up from the, your frailty and step into a conference like this. And God will orchestrate that you sit down near a helper. And the person says, young man, what do you do? And says, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a graduate. He says, the spirit of God said I should hold your hand till you are established. Now, when you come back and meet the person who left God to look for success... The person will say, no, you are just lucky. I'm sure the, it, you just, you succeeded just because you are a ministry. It's a lie. It is the profit of his presence. I used to think this template only works for men of God. The template of making sure that you are surrendered and staying in his presence. And quite honestly, I used to be concerned because I said, ah, if you stay in his presence praying, building capacity won't you lose in time there are many important things to do i found out that nobody loses with god when your spirit man becomes robust and enlarged you will lay up gold as dust i tell you if you came for this conference trusting god to receive restoration and to be free i am telling you the way out take a minute away from business take a minute away from marriage take a minute away from children away from breakthrough can you take a minute and stay tonight and say god is between me and you this is not the issue of healing again i know that they diagnose me of cancer but cancer you will be a later discussion for when you find him when you touch him when you encounter the god of the bible not the one you hear people saying they met when you encounter the god of israel when he places something upon your life you will go out and in in a moment i'm telling you it will not take that long god will raise men god will raise systems he will give you wisdom we're starting tonight because tonight is is a cry for a restoration of our soul and when you pray that prayer, some of you, whilst in the place of prayer, there are other prayers you will not need to pray again. You will go back home and on reaching home, someone will call you and say, you know what? I've been trying to reach you. The job is now waiting for you. And that's when you'll find out that it's not that God could not give you the job. He has seen that Satan wants to use that job as a transaction to steal away your passion, to steal away your hunger, to steal away your fire. 
And let me tell you this. If you hear me saying this thing and you feel in your heart I'm wasting your time, it's an attack on your destiny. It's an attack. There are things only God can do in the life of a man. I have studied success from a business standpoint. I have studied success from an entrepreneurial standpoint by the message of God. I have studied success from a leadership standpoint. I have studied success from a spiritual standpoint. I have come to a conclusion that it doesn't matter what route you take. If your soul, the health of your spirit man, if that is not sorted, you will prosper you will make money doors will open but there is calamity eventually waiting for you it doesn't matter even if it's after 20 years you can do ministry without his presence and excel and one day overnight something happens to you satan is not foolish he does not attack in one day he gives you room so that you can continue without god's presence so that you can continue without your fire listen to me i came here by the spirit tonight to challenge you using my life and to honor your sacrifice of coming to this place for some of you what god is calling you to do now he says son i've always cried for your attention you've gotten so busy busy trying to make life work busy trying to build a house not knowing that except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain there are people by the message of God that I've met in my life today and it's almost like a dream I would never have imagined that at this point in my life by what connection would I have gotten to that level but God for you when he finds your heart who is God speaking to when God can find your heart there are many things that happen in the secret place that becomes your security number one is a circumcision that happens within your heart because you see the tendencies of men is such that until God vets you even you can deceive yourself the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked oh God bless me and I will bring the money to church it's a lie you are sincere but you are still lying you don't even know the state of your heart the Bible says that the heart of man is deceptive above all things you know what it means to have plenty and it does not affect your passion for God you know what it means to be lifted and still be humble and remain on your knees it is not human it is not natural it is a circumcision that happens when you stay with him when God demands that you stay he's not delaying your growth when God demands that you stay he's not wasting your time my dear sister hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit don't let naysayers make you feel that the time invested in God's house the time invested in building your health capacity in the spirit when you plant sometimes the plants does not just sprout and start bearing fruit there are trees like the baobab tree and other trees that would take a long time it will look like progress is not happening one way you know you are working with God is that there will always be silent years in your life years that only God can tell what is happening to you you yourself cannot tell whether you are making progress or not because all the parameters to measure success will be missing and God will keep it intentionally he will teach you to be used to him without things and be comfortable before he brings things did you hear what I said he will teach you to be used to his presence that if I have his presence without money I am still successful if I have his presence without a name I am still successful when his presence becomes your all everything added to it does not distract you again the psalmist said among the many things I desire to restore restore my soul restore my soul for someone restore my soul means restore my prayer life apostle I did not start this way I used to be on fire that fire upon my altar for some of you it was so whilst you were on campus before you became a businessman while you were a faithful member of a fellowship it was prayer every time and by that momentum you were gaining ascendance in the spirit you began in the spirit who distracted you 
what distracted you now for some family life became the temptation and the bait Satan used to distract you others ministry others money others the desire to make it God is the one who designed this system he is not evil to leave your needs unattended to but there is a protocol tonight I came to show you a law that you have been violating that is responsible for most of the losses in our lives when Satan comes to you and he looks at the direction of your attention that's what you attack when he looks at the direction of your attention and he finds it at fame or money he will attack that area but when he finds your eyes fixed on Jesus that while your account is multiplying your eyes is still on Jesus because you have been trained in the secret place that every time you look away from him the waters will sink you Peter that was the lesson walking on water was not just about a miracle he was teaching you how to be undistracted by the things around you to focus on Jesus when Peter looked away from Jesus and began to look at other things like ministry like growth like whatever it is he sank let me tell you this when I was to start ministry the difficulty was how to be able to raise finances for ministry because I made up my mind that I was going to serve God void of compromise that I would never manipulate anybody for myself or to fund the work and based on the visions that God was showing me I knew that this work would require enormous enormous resources how was God going to help me through this by his mercy I remember times when I would come to God and say Lord what is the key to this and he would teach me stay in my presence there is a curriculum for your growth there is a curriculum for your excelling there are people already positioned there is wisdom to navigate you to the place of grace and power but stay I thank God by his mercy that I stayed the foolishness of waiting upon the Lord it will look like you are not making progress let me say this to you and I submit with all humility I'm about to pray for you now there are many people Lord there were many people those days they were in a hurry to make it now I don't say this you know being sarcastic I mean if you saw them you would think if they did not do ministry in one year they would die it was like I want to do mini I want to I want to shine I want to heal the sick I want to do whatever and sometimes humanly you'll be tempted to say I hope this is not the way and I'm missing out and it will tell you stay for someone all through January it looked like you did not make progress in any aspect of your life except that your prayer life was healthy except that your word life was healthy please do not feel foolish you are sowing in the spirit you are making an investment in one year God can bring the job and the husband and give you triplets you would turn back and say so what was the anxiety about what was it about hmm. hallelujah many years later by the mercy of God when God began to do the things that he's now doing through our lives I look back with pain in my heart at some of these wonderful people yesteryears I look at their hurry they wanted to make money fast they wanted fame fast they wanted increase fast and you are now wondering so with all that journey where is it because let me tell you this it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow I have learned in my life if this God does not stand behind you to help you you will waste your time and weary your days it will look like you are making progress only that you will turn back and find out that 15 years was wasted you will go around only to find out that you are back to the place you started this is my call tonight we are going to cry the cry of restoration Lord I'm trusting you for houses I'm trusting you for a car I'm trusting you for increase but for tonight restore my soul restore my soul this transaction I have been doing with Satan unknowingly that my increase has been at the expense of my prayer life my fame has been at the expense of my consecration my rising has been at the expense do not allow your growth become a cost to you the key 
is to give God your heart. When your heart belongs to him, when Satan comes around you, it doesn't matter what he baits you with. Whether increase or challenges, it has no effect on your heart. Do you know why? Because you are totally surrendered. Now, let me say this before we pray. When you come to Jesus, really, you don't give him your heart. You receive his life. That's what happens. Giving him your heart is not a language of born again. It's a language of surrender so that you'll be used by him. When you now hand over your all, he said, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes incline unto my ways. Tonight I came to propose a formula. A formula that turned this small boy you see by his mercy to what God is doing tonight. I don't claim I know everything. I don't claim I know everyone. But there's one thing that the people that do know their God the people that do know their God it doesn't matter where they start from it doesn't matter who has risen or not risen in their family allow God to birth that circumcision to make out that circumcision within your heart tonight you are a man of God I do not doubt truly the hand of God is upon you but this appetite of wanting invitation let me go for ministry I am a great man put my face on the poster you are transacting with Babylon not knowing just because it's a spiritual adventure does not mean you are free take away all those things and stay neither do men light a lamp if you are truly lit it is impossible to be kept in hiding it doesn't matter who victimizes you when you stay and that circumcision happens the gift you receive from his presence is fire that cannot be quenched and when you carry that fire whether as a businessman you carry that fire it doesn't matter as whatever you will excel you will reign that's when you will see that the there is a compensation system i must say this while you are walking with god you will lose many things i have to tell you the truth there are many losses that are not demonic they are consequences of sacrifice did you hear what i said please enugu listen to me listen to this man of god while you walk with god you don't start by gaining when you walk with god you start by losing except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and talk to me and when you walk with God there is a price you will lose friends people will misperceive you that is the price you will start by losing a lot to a point you will be stripped off everything that makes you confident in yourself so that your confidence becomes him when he strips you that much it is also a measure of the weight of glory now let me tell you this there is a compensation system at the end of the journey don't feel cheated no matter what you lose in the journey if it is god who is helping you i assure you if it's money you lost if it's friends you lost if it's your reputation you lost don't worry about that by the time he the maker makes you in one day job lost everything the one thing he had was his honor and reverence for God. And even his wife said, Mr. Man, you've lost all. Cause God and die. Job said, why do you speak like this one of these foolish women? He says, all the days of my appointed time. I don't know if I would have had the kind of stamina to wait like Job. Not when after losing my children, my estate, and then my health. Maybe I would have caused God one day to say, God, you know what? I don't trust you. Kill me if you want to, but not Job. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. To the point that three men came together and the Bible said they sat down for one week. They were looking at Job. Do you know what it means to sit near a sick person for one week and you can't talk to the person? Ah, ah, how did you reduce like this? What kind of attack came on your ministry? What kind of attack came on your family? And Eli who said, nah, it's not always about what the person did wrong. There are mysteries in the spirit. There are times we lose to gain. You shed off certain weights. I'm saying this to someone because you lost a job. You lost friends. Someone said if you will compromise, you will get an oil and gas company work. And you refused. You thought by the next day a breakthrough will come. And sometimes preachers, we need to be careful as we teach people. There is a process before emergence happens. Just because you say no to Satan does not mean 
God's answer will come immediately. There are times no answer will come for two years, five years. You will feel foolish for saying no to the devil. But wait. Still wait. You made up your mind that you will stay. And everybody who started with you has gone ahead of you. They call you one day and say, please, we are concerned about your destiny. Tell them I came to church tonight and I had one word. Wait. Wait. Yeah, I will wait to I will wait thank God for your ministry go ahead I wish you well but I will wait the ordination upon my life and the weight of glory that I carry requires a building I will wait provided it is waiting upon the Lord I will wait let the circumcision happen and God looks at you and says I want to trust you with nations but because of the background you came from maybe you came from a polygamous background the tendency for pride the tendency for wickedness is there so that it does not destroy you in the future allow me to circumcise you and i tell you while that is happening it will be painful waiting is the hardest thing i know for a believer because you wait in the silence of god as a man of god someone will come for counseling over something that you are going through you will solve their problem by prophecy and then you still remain in that situation and you are saying ah, ah. somebody came to you and said look I'm trusting God for finances. You say, let's pray. And as you spoke, the person sent you a text one hour and said, you are really anointed. And you, your rent has not been paid. The person said, no, you are really, I'll come with my friend again. So you, pray. after praying for 10 people or a barren woman praying and a woman comes with triplets and said, I've never experienced graces like this. And you say, God, what of me? Here is my message for you tonight. Wait. Some of you, are, I'm, I'm wrapping up now. You are about the finish line. Wait. Because you see, if you are to run a marathon and you are the last round and you are tired, they would not say because you went seven rounds for eight, you've done well. You still lost. You and the person who was not in the field will receive the same lot. Shame. I made up my mind that if it is God, bah, i rather be a fool in the presence of men, but I will stay with him. I have seen the value of his presence. I look at my life today, and, and, and I, don't, I don't say this to be arrogant. I, I hope you don't misunderstand me for arrogance. Honestly, I have seen the mercy of God. Sometimes when I'm alone, I've tried to cry in the midst of people. My tears will not just come out. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I'm not a very emotional person, but when I try to cry, oh yeah, come now, the tears will not come. But when I'm alone, because I consider the things he's done in my life. I, I remember that small boy. And I stand I say, Lord, look what you've done in my life. And it says, teach people what I did in your life. Don't just enjoy it. Teach people that the secret is when you forget about all and stay with him. Master, we have left all. Oh, we left all. We left all. We left all. We left all. We left invitations. We left opportunities. If you ever think you stay with God and become a failure, the formula that was given to you was wrong. But if it is God's formula, as your soul prospers, every other thing will eventually catch up. And sometimes it will catch up so fast. When God began to show us mercy as a ministry, when God began to show me mercy as a person, at a point I was going to say, Lord, what is this? It's like this train is running too fast. But that's what happens when you build capacity in the spirit. In one day, question, how long did it take Job to be restored? Have you read your Bible? Job 42 and verse 10. Read 10 and 11. That's how long it took Job to be restored. All while he was going through that season, ladies and gentlemen, all the people who had capacity to help him were there, but mysteriously they were far from him. Oh, but there is an east wind that can blow helpers from everywhere. And in one day, back to back, somebody comes to you and says, Gentleman, you are in this choir. God said, I should give you a house. You will first look at it and say, No, it is a joke. Let me tell you this. I share these stories to inspire you for many years I stayed in one room 
as a man of God. I would travel and preach, be kept in very nice places. I didn't stay because of luck. I was paying for people, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, keeping people, paying school fees. And God would tell me to stay in one room. I said, what is all this one again? If I've sinned against you, I'm sorry. What, what, what did I do wrong like that? Stay. I remember people who bring vehicles and give me. You see that? Bring vehicles and give me. And the Holy Spirit said, no, I can supply. Pray on the vehicle and take it back. I remember a time when a group of women, I was in my room praying. I had, you know how women sing choruses and they are coming to your house. You know that's a serious issue. Once you see them together singing choruses and they, came, they just as concerned mothers, they wanted to know if there was something wrong with me that I was not sharing. When they left, I said, God, is, is something wrong with me? Do you know what it means to be paying rent for other people and you are staying in one room? And I used to counsel in that one room. I did not hide it. You enter the room and you think it's an office. Only that it's an office with a bed. Well prepared bed. Office with DSTV. And, and free to air. What kind of one room is like that? People will bring cars. I remember I used to climb bike. To go for miracle service. Now everybody's life may not follow that template. I'm only giving you an example. To show you what it means to stay until you are made. Hallelujah. Imagine a crowd of people like this and you hear a bike outside and that's me with my Bible. And I drop and the people are looking with shock and disbelief. Ah, is it that these guys are wicked? They cannot buy car for this man of God? So people offered. There were people who decided to, oh yeah, let's do it. I remember it was a miracle service. The head of protocol is here. When a woman from Lagos sent a Siena and sent that Siena and they dropped it and they called me that a woman had brought a car for me i said god who is this car for and god said no this one is for you i didn't look at that car i passed i went for for the miracle service it was when i returned back in the night that i now looked at it that's when i knew what had happened to me the string that connects the heart with things was no longer there this was the circumcision that god was doing that there is an invisible string in the heart of men that those are the strings that make you look like a puppet in the midst of things money moves you here titles move you here fame moves you here God now brought that circumcision to my heart and I'm honored today the rest is history to God be the glory I cannot tell you the things that God has done in my life today God carried the lifetime of many people and gave me in one lifetime many people today we are able to do the things that we do for the kingdom across the nations our first crusade we were not a little more than your choir after fasting you know, for two weeks I'm praying the car spoiled on the way we didn't have money to call mechanic it was praying in tongues that got that car back I, I tell the truth and I lie not the ladies everybody was in every department that time just find a department that is empty and join the ladies would climb trees to pluck some wood so that they could cook and they were still in the worship team they would quickly cook and rush and go and dress but today to God be the glory listen